Hi, uh, my name is Aaron Trammell. I'm an instructor at Rutgers University. I teach a course called uh, Strategic Digital Presentation, where I basically go uh, over a bunch of digital tools to present uh, oneself online with students. Uh, and you know, the the course is two two parts to it. The first half is the the presentation part, where I kind of walk them through all these online presentation tools. Uh, you know, editing audio, editing video, screencasting, and and all that stuff, and then the second half of the course is the strategic half, where we talk about social networking, getting yourself out there, thinking using Twitter, thinking about the implications of these things, what happens when you put yourself online. And so um, I guess I've been invited by uh, Nathan Graham and Jess Lingle to discuss uh, this question of, I guess, digital proliferation and provide some feedback on it. And uh, from teaching this class, I can tell you that I've definitely run into some roadblocks and obstacles uh, to, to this. So the, the, the most important thing I, I really want to start with is how important I really think it is that the classroom is a space of exploration uh, while students are learning. And by that, I mean to say that when a student uses YouTube, they should be able to go grab uh, clips of things from online and edit them. Um, and although I can't always encourage students to post the things that they edit on YouTube online, I do encourage them to share them with one another, at least, through Dropbox. Uh, because this is a server sort of service, so that students are uploading to a cloud that's not as public as YouTube, that they can still share their work with and share their efforts with. Because if students can't explore online, they can't explore getting their hands dirty and working uh, with digital media, how can I expect them to be competitive in today's digital society? So that's one really important thing. The other really important thing for me is to kind of know a little bit about fair use when it comes to the classroom. Uh, if as a teacher I am not able to talk to my students about the implications of putting their work online through fair use, I don't know how I could possibly discuss anything involving digital media or digital culture with them. Almost everything out there is recycled or reused in some way. Even the materials I give my students to work with, they're recycling from stuff that I had taken as an instructor and given to them as an instructional tool. And so if they don't know what fair use is and how things can be uh, basically put under the number of fair use, I don't know how I can honestly tell them I've instructed them to think about and work with digital media. So that's the other thing. Um, exploration, being able to use stuff in digital context, but also understanding the legal repercussions and understanding what fair use is and how, if they're trying to make a profit out of something, they need to be particularly cautious about uh, the way they recycle and reuse materials. Because if that stuff proliferates and their name is behind it, they might get caught and get in trouble. So um, that's kind of where I stand with this thing. It's that students need, need that space to explore, but at the same time, students need to be cautious about the legal repercussions. Now, the problem with this advice is that not everybody has time to become a fair use scholar, and not everybody has time to upload videos that they've created themselves that students should use. In fact, um, most digital exploration uh, is easier when these limits don't stand in the student's way. Uh, the last thing I really wanted to talk about was this one example where a student group had created a project they were particularly proud of. They had done a great job with it, but unfortunately for them, um, it, it got leaked by some of the people they had been collaborating with onto MySpace, uh, circulated in that fashion, and the nonprofit organization that they were trying to help out got really mad because some information about that nonprofit uh, that they didn't want to get out uh, kind of leaked with this video. And uh, this was a really kind of harrowing moment for me during the semester because here were students doing honest, good work, going out there to help somebody that they thought that they were helping only to find um, uh, not only a legal, but also a sort of corporate hurdle standing in their way, where uh, they were told that they couldn't use that stuff, they couldn't distribute that stuff, and that their work wasn't useful to this nonprofit, specifically because uh, there had been parts uh, of it that the nonprofit didn't want to disclose, uh, parts involving other organizations that were competing. Uh, and I guess as a teacher, my only response was I had to neutralize it. I had to tell the students to take it off, offline. And I had to tell uh, the students that even though they had done the right thing and they had done a good job, uh, it, it was the sort of thing that they just uh, couldn't distribute. Now, 
These things could have had workarounds. Students could have spoken more with the nonprofit and tried to negotiate something, but part of the problem was the nonprofit felt like the damage was done the moment these things hit the social network. And so I guess that's a final word of caution, is that although we have to think about the, uh, the power and uh, the implications of social media networks as a way to kind of get the word out and put stuff out there in a way it hasn't been before, uh, we also need to think about uh, how getting the word out too quickly might affect students or might affect the sort of networks of people involved in the production of that thing. Um, I wish that digital media could proliferate like it seems to have been designed to. But unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be a caution that uh, takes into account the students or the students' feelings. And so understanding fair use understanding proliferation through social media and the implications therein, and understanding that the classroom is ultimately a space to learn and explore, I'd say are the most important things that um, I could speak to on this topic. Anyways, uh, my name is Aaron Trammell. Um, I'm an instructor at Rutgers University, and I hope this has been helpful.